So now we shall consider in this video planetary conversations as in how planets talk to one another which is very important because this planetary conversations once you get the principles of how they work it's easier to see how the individual fits into collective how the collective will run back to the individual okay so okay here we go so first chart again we have the overall picture of what's going on here so we have the personal planets and we have the extra personal planets um, Jupiter and Saturn and we have the transpersonal Neptune and Uranus, Pluto okay so now we need to know what conversations are going on between these guys okay here we go so the first thing to know is the time cycles how these guys move in the heavens so personal planets of course move the quicker moon moves two to three days in each sign we are talking about each sign here mercury takes 25 days venus takes a month almost the same mars takes one and a half months to move one sign rahu in the ketu north node south node take the longest among the personal ones that is one and a half years to move and in reverse order compared to planets planets move all in clockwise direction north and south nodes they move in anti-clockwise direction so anyway that's the time cycles of personal time cycle of extra personal ones jupiter takes one year through each sign saturn, take, saturn takes two and a half years through each sign time cycle for the transpersonal this is our subject of interest here uranus takes seven years neptune takes 14 years double the amount of time Pluto actually takes between 11 and 20 years. Okay, we just consider for this purposes 15 to 20 years just to be on the round side of things. So how does, let's begin with Uranus. How does Uranus talk to the others? So Uranus, the higher mind, spends seven year cycle in each sign. If it moves to Aries, for example, it will spend seven years time in Aries alone. That's a long time in any person's life. So what does it do? How does it talk in this seven years? And what's the conversations? Now I've made some figure here to give you the figurative explanation of what's going on. So Uranus, first of all, you've got to understand Uranus changes stuff and it changes. Change makers are at two fronts. One is the knowledge front, which is a Jupiter action front on the ground, which is Saturn. So Uranus speaks to both Jupiter and Saturn this is where you got to see in each chart where these are placed in which signs and how they are working the actual planets and you got to see even from the point of view of ascendant we'll see the list later on but just follow the arrows for now so Uranus speaks to Jupiter and Saturn and Jupiter and Saturn in turn speak to Rahu because Rahu is the Bhogkaraka Rahu is the one that makes changes okay and Rahu in turn communicates that back to Mars which takes action and it communicates to Mercury because Uranus needs to read back this is the feedback cycle so Rahu speaks to Mercury and Mercury speaks back to Uranus and this cycle continues for seven year period in everyone's chart so let's review that once again so Uranus speaks to Jupiter and Saturn you got to see where all these are in the chart and in transitions as well natal line transition so uranus speaks to jupiter saturn both of whom speak to rahu rahu speaks to mercury and mars one is the mind one is the action because it has to create change and mercury sends the information feedback to uranus because uranus is the higher form of mercury it goes back to the higher mind and the cycle continues further as it continuously transits so what are the rules here? Let's see some of how Uranus acts and what you got to consider. Consider the personal pl placement of Uranus in your natal chart. Okay, birth chart. The main basic birth chart. Where is Uranus placed? In which house? Which sign? Which house and sign both? We will see this in details later on by ascendant so it becomes clearer. These are just the rules. Consider the Ascendant itself. Watch the Ascendant series, video series of mine for this, okay? You will see each of the Ascendants, how it will play out. But we will do more of the details here in later videos. Consider where Mercury, Mars, Saturn and Jupiter houses are. 
where there are lords of the ascendant okay lords through the ascendant where they are placed and how the planets are placed first the houses and where the planets are actually there <clears throat> consider where rahu the north node is placed and what it is transiting through uranus will work through these as unconventional obsession and drive to make changes through certain areas of the person's life and through certain planets Uranus being the unconventional maverick like i said it's more of an aquarian energy so it will take its own time as Ju through jupiter and saturn and mercury and mars to get the work done through rahu rahu makes a person go towards or away from something it changes the energy of the person so uranus being the unconventional maverick transits affect all signs ruled by mercury in each ascendant so mercury signs are virgo and gemini which will appear in each sign separately see the ascendant videos to mind and belief and it will affect to saturn governed signs such as aquarius and capricorn to action and work jupiter governed signs such as sag and pisces as more refinement in knowledge so it, uranus changes each lord of each kind of house or each kind of sign in separate ways some are driven to action some are driven to knowledge some are driven to communication so it affects all this is how one planet affects the entire collective you are beginning to see the picture here okay so let's see now uranus journey seven years in each sign by the time uranus finishes his journey through one sign following transition is have already happened starting from the personal planets going outward remember you always this rule you start from the personal planets and go outward outward planets work will work through the slower moving planets going right up to the personal follow this rule everywhere so mercury the lower aspect of uranus and venus lower aspect of neptune have done about eight rounds of all 12 signs by the time uranus finishes the seven years in one this is what has happened next thing what has happened rahu or the north node has made transition through five signs in reverse order because it takes seven years right this takes one and a half years jupiter has finished moving through seven signs saturn has finished moving through about two and a half signs in that seven year period saturn takes two and a half years right that's what has happened keep these rules take screenshots if you want now let's go to neptune what happens in neptune the higher heart it's a 14 year cycle in each sign and that's the communication path it follows now neptune is a dissolver it's more like ketu so it will talk to ketu finally and it has nothing to do much with action so saturn and mars are absent from the picture as you can see neptune is more of recalibration of the higher heart heart has nothing to do with structure it has nothing to do with action items so neptune talks to jupiter higher heart talks to first the knowledge pattern higher wisdom jupiter is teaching in wisdom and wisdom communicates to ketu the one who is dissolving the south node ketu in our in turn talks to mercury because it needs to communicate back to intellect which communicates to venus because venus is the lower form of neptune so and then venus in turn communicates back to uranus because it has to come through the higher mind neptune communicates only via the higher mind and at which feeds it back to the higher mind so this goes on for 14 years while this is transiting for 7 this takes double the amount of time this will have done two rounds by the time through the whole uh, to one particular sign so it will have done two signs this will have covered just one sign by the time okay so now let's consider how neptune acts same rules almost the planets just change the bulleted points are the same as uranus so consider the personal placement of neptune in your natal chart the birth chart which house in which sign consider your ascendant watch the ascendant videos for that consider where mercury venus uranus and jupiter houses where are their lords present through the ascendant where are the houses present and how the planets are actually placed in which house
Remember, house may be ruled by a particular planet which gives the theme, but unless we know how the planets are placed, you don't know how they are acting individually. Consider where Ketu or the south node is placed, in which sign, both in natal and transit, and what it is transiting through. Neptune will work through these as emotional re-evaluation of personal themes of one's life and the drive to make internal shift through planets. So this is how the collective is affecting the individual. Neptune being the unconventional artist, the healer, the psychic. Even the shamans, transit will affect all signs ruled by Venus in each ascendant to sensuality, beauty, etc. First is Venus because this is the lower form. So it will have most dominant impact on, let's say, Libra and Taurus. To Jupiter, it is governed by higher knowledge. Knowledge as in which is combined with a little bit of sensitivity, with a little bit of emotion and compassion. Because Neptune stands for emotion and compassion as we saw in the first video of this series. And Mercury and Uranus govern science as the heart sanctioned action. You have to sanction action. Heart sanctioned in the sense the heart agrees with the action or not. The heart has to agree with something in order for things to take place. We humans usually do not act if our heart is not in it, as they say. Right? Okay. So the 14 year journey of Neptune, by the time, what happens by the time Neptune finishes this journey through one sign, following transitions have happened, Uranus has moved to double the amount of time. Mercury and Venus almost together, 25 and one month, it's okay, I've just considered one. Mercury and Venus have done about 16 rounds of all 12 signs. This is a lot of recalibration. If it has moved through all the signs, in the 14 year period, you've changed a lot as a person. This is why a person changes a lot in that period. You've done literally twice the amount of changing, right? Your heart take, typically that's why it would take 14 years time to completely shift from one point to another point in your life. Rahu, and okay, actually for Neptune, in this case, it should be Ketu, I haven't changed that. Ketu, the south node has made transitions through 10 signs in reverse order because Neptune is talking to Ketu remember Jupiter has finished moving through all signs plus two additional signs so it has taken it takes 12 years one month per sign so it takes 12 years plus two more signs it's finished now Jupiter moving through all 12 houses of anyone will have significant impact on their learning what they think about life now <coughs> Saturn has finished moving through about five signs. This is again a big deal because Saturn is the mover of action. In Saturn takes action on the ground. It does daily grind real work in life. That's what has happened. This is very significant. Now let's see Pluto, the higher self. It takes about 20 years on an average in each sign. And this is just simply put, you already seen the actions of Neptune and Uranus and how they talk to inner planets. So it's easy, you can rewind this video and go back and see that. Pluto is simply it takes from the heart and gives it back to Uranus. Because Uranus is the guy which takes action in the real world through Saturn. Neptune is the one which takes it from the heart. This is why it is also said in many spiritual truths, the heart needs a sanction in order for the mind to work. Even the higher heart needs to be first recalibrated in order for the higher self to give that back to the higher mind. And then it comes down through these guys into the central core of you. Okay, all the Sun, Moon, Rahu, Ketu, Mercury, Venus, Mars. It all comes down to this. Now, what happens? Pluto, how does it act? Same rules, once again. But now all the planets are to be considered, including Uranus and Neptune, because Pluto is the last governing body where permanent transformation takes place. You have to consider both Rahu and Ketu. You have to consider everything that's going on. Pluto, think of him as a general of the army, Mars as the soldier. We talked about Mars as the soldier. So Pluto is a general of the army who directs the entire army and all the platoons and everything gives a strategy of how to change it something permanently. They change the lines on the map. 
So Pluto is the general of the army and that transit affects all signs ruled by Mars. Mars is the lower version of Pluto, which is Aries and Scorpio, right? And that's how it comes down through Ketu. So the Jupiter governed signs as higher knowledge and learning, which has to be implemented in the world. Pluto, Pluto anything that it changes, it has to be physically implemented. It's a change maker and so does Uranus. Okay. So now the Pluto journey of 20 years in each sign. Uranus has moved through two signs. Neptune has moved through one and a half signs. Mercury and Venus have moved done about 20 rounds of all 12 signs in 20 years time. So in 20 years time, nobody is going to be the same because Pluto has fully finished doing all the lessons of that particular house, all the karmic journey it has finished for the individual. You have to finish all the karmic journeys to, in order for you to move forward. Rahu and Ketu both, of course, have made transitions through 15 signs in reverse order. So it's one and a half times the zodiac almost. Jupiter has finished moving through all signs plus one, plus four signs. Okay. Saturn has finished moving through about seven signs. So this is the journey which the um, Pluto has undertaken. Now you can revisit this particular video. That's why I put it as a podcast. And then later ones when we go through ascendant by ascendant and we will take only the snapshots of how it is, the shift is happening and things like children of new consciousness and where their Pluto, Mercury, Venus is and how they are recalibrating the collective and individually. We'll take that separate series because it's going to be too long. All right, take care.